Welcome to The Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always... As long as there are witnesses, there is no money. Eddie of Edward is Truth. And today we're talking about Mute Witness, released September 15th, 1995. This uh, is kind of a a little lost movie of sorts. Yeah. Um, It's recently, it's it's almost like it's kind of receiving a renaissance at the moment uh, because it is getting uh, a 4K release. Mm-hmm. On uh, b- 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 Arrow, Arrow, they're putting it out uh, in June. Uh, yeah. But uh, the only way that you've really been able to watch it for the longest time was uh, like a DVD or VHS, because it never mm-hmm. made it to Blu-ray. Yeah. Uh, but it is currently. Actually, do you want to let us know where where we can watch it? Uh, yeah, you can currently stream it off AMC Plus, aka Shutter, uh, if you have an active subscription to either one of those, and. Um... Yeah, also uh, Prime, as per usual. Um, <laughs> 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 may, as use, may as well yeah. just do like a Shutter or AMC Plus subscription because you'll have access to yeah. it and also to so many other horror titles. Well, just dive in, kids. Yeah, I mean, I sh- like Shutter. there's there's a, a pretty good selection. Like I have, uh, I don't have a year-round subscription, but it just auto renews um oh. and I, I i do you know sometimes like to watch the like original documentaries that they have like there's there's a lot of good stuff on there but you know there's a lot of stuff on there too but you know i have a good time with it because it's just like what other streaming services do have or, or just like really dedicated to just horror uh because yeah. because i mean there there are some but shutter is is probably the you know the upper echelon of that um but I did uh, watch this last night uh, on because I have the DVD. I will buy the mm. 4K when that comes out. But uh, mm. I watched it on Shutter because I, I, as far as I know, that's like the 4K uh, okay. uh, transfer resolution. Yeah. yeah, like it looked. It it was the best I'd ever seen the movie at that point because I've I've only ever had the the DVD. But uh, I saw this some time ago. Uh, I don't even remember when I first saw it, but this is the first really? time you've seen it, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. either it was it, – because I used to work in video stores, so I either saw it on the shelf because, like, the cover for it is, like, really – I mean, it's got the same, like, sort of, like, the Scream cover of, like, Drew Barrymore's face or, like, Silence of the Lambs, but it's just, like, <laughs> mute witness, and the mute is, like, stitching, like, covering her mouth, and just, like, that yeah. looks – gross and intense yeah. and i want to and i want to watch that so i either rented it on like on vhs back in the day or um i caught it on tv i i have no recollection of of which or when but i just always like the movie stuck with me like i always remembered the beginning um and the rest i kind of forget um oh wow but uh cards on the table what what do you think Okay, it fucking blew me away from the get-go. It just kind of hit the ground running. And I, w- I had to keep pausing, and I was like, I-, I just need eventually to just sit and watch this movie. <laughs> because I keep pausing it, and I feel like the... the- the the, the 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 pacing like I'm I'm not I'm not missing it because I can obviously see it is sc- it, it, it it's the action is scored like music like the the, the it just the inclines and the and the decrescendos and and the roller coaster ride of it all like it it just it bobs and weaves and lifts and separates no not that but you know what i'm saying <laughs> there's a, i mean the, I, i'd say like by the 30 minute point like everything that proceeds or like not from the beginning cuz there's like setup uh, but it's all kind of taking place in real time it seems mostly mm. i mean there's some you know iffy like what wh- what's happening how much time has passed but it's the same location and i think yeah. that probably for like a good 15 minutes it is like it's it's non-stop it's very like high octane suspenseful tension that just that's why like during that time i would not take a break because you know you don't want to you don't want to lose that um yeah. afterwards you know you know we'll get into it but uh i i it, it's I always feel like the the uh, the chase scene because this whole movie is kind of like a big giant chase scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, just like <laughs> spread from, from start to finish. And I do kind of, you know, see a little bit of Scream 2 in there. I There's a few things that I saw in here. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get to those as we discuss them. But Scream 2, absolutely, particularly the initial... Um, uh, 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 it's not even a chase, but so much as an evasion. Like I did think about Gail yeah. moving, you know, around the walls of that recording studio. Yeah, but uh, even like the the hallway, sure. it's just like very similar, yeah. uh, and like just like going from door to door, just like it, it's almost yes. like blocked in in almost the same way of just like where uh -huh. she's coming from and and where she's being chased. Um, and just and, barely missing, like, being seen. And yeah. To the point where you're watching the movie going, like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and she doesn't have, like, the, the dark hair with the red streaks, but she's got, like, a similar kind of bob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, she yeah. her hair shorter. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's funny. I didn't anyway, notice that. I know. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it because uh, I – there's there's quite a bit to unpack with this, but uh, before we, you know, get to a, a premise and all that, I do want to thank some of our Patreon supporters. So if you uh, have been listening to the podcast and you love the podcast or you like it, uh, just a little bit, uh, we appreciate any sort of support that you offer us. If you want to show us your love, uh, so you can head over to Patreon.com/slash Zach Cherry. Is that A C K C H E R R Y? That's me, of course. And, uh, you know, any tier will get you early access to all of our episodes. Uh, if you are at the Freddy Krueger tier, you get access to the Cherry Picker After Dark, which is the bonus episode we do every month. This month we are doing Final Girls Survivor 2, or however mm -hmm. we're calling it. I, I, I forget the title, but <laughs> mm. we're, we had a blast doing the first one, and we've obviously done uh, Scream Survivor in the past, three seasons yes. of that. So we're going to take uh, 18 uh, brand new final girls of movies that we've already covered uh, mm -hmm. in this what are we at like 105 episodes now and we're gonna put them on an island and we're gonna let them fight for the million dollar prize <laughs> is it a million dollars this time is that what they're gonna be well I mean for? <laughs> technically it's always the, I mean that's what it is with the, okay. the US survivor but when uh, Wes yeah. Craven grants them the <laughs> Yeah, sure. Why Wes not? Wes Craven Let's... is always the host. That's that's the rule. Yeah, <laughs> uh, even though we we kind of lose sight of that, we're kind of the hosts, you know. But right, right. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. So if you want something very niche uh, and uh, absurd, but also really fun, you know, head over there. And Freddy Krueger's here gets you access to that. There's lots of other fun things on my Patreon, but uh, I do want to specifically shout out my top top tier. Supporters, so for the Michael Meyer supporters, uh, give it up for Kyle Beard, Sam Levy, Khalil Young, Brady James, Ali Hamouche, Shane Allingham, Tim McKay, Stephanie Starbright, Horror Slut 95, Iggy Zanetta, Sean Flanagan, Josh Carr, Michael boswell and brandy bb as well as our ghost face supporters eric champney daniel saturn tamika jones and garrison nichols thank you very much to our michaels and ghost faces and every other tier that was not mentioned you guys are <laughs> making this happen week in week out and uh, we greatly appreciate you for that uh, <laughs> we do. We do. And we also appreciate Boy Cried Wolf, who is our editor. Uh, so thank you very much to Boy Cried Wolf for putting up with us. Yeah. Do you <laughs> have a premise for us, Edward? Yeah, I got one. All right. Should it be Russian? <laughs> um. Yeah, if, if you can pull it off. Okay, let's see. We'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> A speechless makeup artist working on a slasher movie shoot in Moscow finds herself locked in the studio after hours where a brutal murder occurs before her eyes. She must escape capture now that she is a mute witness. Huh? <laughs> in Soviet Russia, <laughs> witness mute you. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay the hell away from Derek Zoolander. I think that's what I'm pulling for is uh, our girl, yeah. our Resident Evil heroine from yeah. the Zoolander. My favorite, um, like, bad, <laughs> bad joke. Like, do you remember the uh, the old Adam West Batman series? Like, did you ever watch yeah, that? Of course. I, actually, I think it's the yeah. movie uh, uh, that came out, I think it was between season two or three or whatever but there's a one riddle. and two it was between one, 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 one and two, two. okay yeah there's a riddle and it's just like people who are like from the riddle are like oh. what people are always in a hurry russians russians yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was so clever when i was a kid yeah. when i'd watch that show all those riddles and all the way that ways that they solved them i thought that's detective work and i watch it now and it is pure camp i'm like that is ridiculous yeah. i can't believe i ever like admired. how do you <laughs> How do you get from one point to the next? Um, any, anyway, Mute Witness. Uh, did you know that this was actually originally set in Chicago? Like, I guess that the uh, the story was supposed to take place in Chicago. And then uh, the uh, writer, director, producer, Anthony Waller, uh, realized that it would be cheaper if they did shoot it in Moscow. So, what? It, yeah, the whole... I mean, it, 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 which is interesting because, like, it, when I watch this, I feel like a lot of it was kind of made up on the fly. That's the <laughs> that's the sense that I get. Like, there's there's ideas and things that were there, but it was just sort of, you know, a lot of it came together by chance or just like whatever was going on. Like, it's just like a movie out of convenience or just like plot threads out of convenience to get from point A to point B because by the end of the movie none of it really is cohesively linked to anything like it just it just feels like a big disjointed mess well for me I'd say more along the lines of uh that's so funny I mean I can't imagine it taking place anywhere in the United States because one thing aside from the scream 2 of it all that I got from it was a kind of giallo feel mm -hmm. and specifically like Dario Argento, just in terms of number one, the randomness and number two, kind of the imagery, particularly whenever Billy is having flashbacks of what she witnessed, um, yeah. the, the murder of the, uh, the, the, the sex worker, the, um, um, uh, that woman. Yeah. Uh, especially when she's in the tub. Like, I was like, this feels very Argento, even down to the woman's face in the bathroom window, kind yeah. of like screaming at her. And I was like, this is amazing. But um, even in the kind of like crime solving, <laughs> like, I'm a cop, but I'm kind of like a rogue cop and I'm going to take this civilian and I need her in order to kind of like solve the case. And I'm also going to go about all this unorthodox kind of like, uh, these ways, these methods of, you know, trying to win the day and you're never going to know what's what. The fact that it also kept me guessing in that way felt all wonderfully, kind of gloriously European. And, <laughs> yeah. and so to imagine it as like a strictly American story, I feel like it, it almost might have lost something. I feel like maybe it's also just the fact that it's happening like on another continent with people speaking a different language. Something about... The translation um, of it all, like the language the barrier, that, yeah, yeah. The, the fact that she, that Billy, isn't the only character who needs, uh, who, who needs a translator around to try and keep the lines of communication open. Everyone on that set, really, at one point or another, if they want to communicate effectively, they either have to be bilingual or mi multilingual, yeah, or they have to have somebody on hand to translate, and yeah. you have to trust that. Person. I mean. And, yeah. I could imagine just being there. Like, you know, forget the the horror of what's going on. Just, like, being in Russia would be terrifying to me. <laughs> because I mean, of that, Russia. I just, like, I don't know. What's that? I've been in Russia before. You've been in Russia? Was, How was it? I, I, I was 14 years old, and I went uh, on a trip to do the musical Grease in a cultural exchange uh, children's theater program. Yeah. where basically half the cast were young American kids and the other half were young Russian kids. And we went out there and did a number of performances with them in Makba. And then uh, we took them out here and did a number of performances all over California okay. and uh, performed in Northern California, Southern California. It was fun. And yeah. uh, really, really sweet kids. Like, it was great. But yeah. it, it was it was very different. Like, there was... 
shell shock. I was very happy that there was like kind of like a light at the end of the tunnel because we only spent about two weeks uh, with yeah. all the travel of it and everything like that. Yeah. And I, if I had to spend more time there, or like or be like on a film shoot as an adult and not have adults constantly <laughs> kind of ushering me where I need to go. Yeah. Um, like I felt the anxiety of yeah. just kind of like being in a place where well, and then to not be able to speak on top of all that. Yeah, because there's already there's already an anxiety when you're in an unfamiliar territory Absolutely. and something like that. And there's just something so intimidating <laughs> about like yeah. Russia that I'd just be like, okay, this is already a terrifying experience. Because I was in yeah. I well I traveled to India and my, yeah. a lot of people do speak English there. Um, yeah. uh, more so, I, I think it was like in in the south which is where I started my trip. So I was just sort of like became very acclimated to, you know, like having conversations with, you know, just like everything was, you know, understood and you could talk to people. But the more north you get, sure. the less people know English. And that became very challenging. There was a, because like, I took a bus um, mm. for about, uh, you know, 20 hours or something. And, and it's stiflingly hot. Like people in, like in India, like what we would consider to be like balmy hot weather, that's where they might be wearing parkas mm. and just like really bundled up. So I'm just like spitzing like crazy on this bus and I open a window and I'm like, let it, like, can we get a breeze in here? And, and everyone started yelling at me. <laughs> I, no one spoke English and they're just like, close the window you know it's just like are you not dying right now and oh so my God. you know i could i i could imagine just like you know anywhere uh that is not your native land is uh is going to be difficult yeah. if you don't speak the language and there are not people there who which i can there, can speak yeah. your language um but yeah. yeah so on top of that you like because that's one layer of it You've got the whole thing that she has witnessed something, but then she's mute as well. So it's just like there's there's like a language barrier on top of a language barrier. Um, mm -hmm. The the actress who plays her, she's phenomenal, by the way, Marina yes. Zudina. Um, cool. Who I get like she is Russian. She's I mean she's Billy oh, wow. Hughes. The character is American, but that was sort of like I, I guess uh, the benefit of of casting locally because she doesn't speak so there's you know they could just pass her off as american uh so mm -hmm. she actually i mean i don't know if she understands english now but according to uh the trivia on imdb she did not speak english then and if you look at her film credits like everything is just like russian production so she i don't think has done anything really uh outside of russia or north american besides that right wow Okay, see that see that's crazy because she's such a huge component of this movie for me too. Like if she doesn't work, then the movie doesn't work. And the yeah. fact that I, I I mean the the film makery of it all actually helps put me in her experience anyway. Like I knew from the moment like okay, oh okay. <sighs> There's so much to unpack just with the opener, but bef let's let's pussyfoot around that. Okay. Just, <laughs> just catty corner and more cat <laughs> like phrases yeah. about like just kind of putting that aside and just saying like once we knew where we were and what was actually happening or at least got some kind of a sense of like what was happening um and saw her standing in a row of people who were all watching this movie being shot the fact that uh the guy who was like over there behind the camera kept like casting these furtive glances in her direction and not so furtive either it was pretty clear and i didn't like him on sight i was like i don't know if i trust this guy stop looking at him and it's not not her fault for looking at him but i'm just like but no no, no don't, don't don't focus on him you got you got a job to do hun just and already i'm taking sides and then when we found out what we found out a little bit later when she saw him in a compromising position or shooting people in a compromising position i was like see this is what i knew i had a bad feeling about this guy i was so proud of myself for <laughs> well when <laughs> you kind of going, well, I mean, what do they say i mean at least for for you know people who are blind it's just like it heightens all your other senses so i would imagine that the same thing works like if you if you're mute wouldn't that heighten your senses as well because you you can't rely on communicating verbally so you have to you know fall back on everything else and and you know it makes th those senses stronger so i mean she's like Even she, you, she can be more yeah. intuitive about just like hey that's i'm getting a bad vibe uh with that mm -hmm. and i and i mean I, I i loved like just like watching there's like these moments where just trying to get people's attention 
uh, in like the 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 only way she can, and just and uh, the only person who really seems to get her is her sister because everyone else is yeah. just like huh what's what's going on here but it's just like her sister is <laughs> so like in tune with her and that was like something i really mm-hmm. liked about it too it's just like Me that too. relationship throughout uh, the movie because it's just like no i like i trust her because it's one of those things where it's just like she who can she rely on who can she communicate with you know because it's like that the the double barrier there but even like these people because it's just like i think the only americans are really her her sister and her Mm brother-in-law from what i remember yeah i don't everybody else i mean i know the actress in the beginning like okay okay can we we just talk about the beginning too okay okay. let's let's talk about the beginning like diving into this movie like what it was like first of all like it was kind of reassuring to see the little crests uh, you know and this was obviously like a festival darling so i was like okay cool this this oh some people like this movie this isn't i thought it was okay because like cards on the table you said mute witness i hadn't heard of this movie before Mm -hmm. so i thought it was like a recent movie from like this past year or the year before Mm -hmm. and that's why you wanted to do it and and it was gonna like that's why it was now newly available on shutter and that's why this new edition was coming out in 4k and in blu-ray there's also a solo blu-ray uh edition that's that's coming coming out out. same day yeah yeah Yeah. um in june but um so i was so when i saw oh 1995 is am, am i watching the right one and i saw there's not really there's one other like mute witness that came out like sometime in the mid 20th century and i'm like i know that's not it so i'm like okay I, this is, seems to be the only one i'm gonna wa-. and it's on shutter and that's yeah. what zach said and it's the only one that's available on shutter so i'm gonna watch it so i watch it i see the crests and then it starts okay I am immediately like stricken by kind of like the <laughs> the the Myers house of it all just by kind of like the the low breathing and the killer POV and then immediately the first slap across the face is the immediate entry into what seems to be this apartment that this woman is just kind of obliviously getting ready for a bath or yeah. getting ready for bed or whatever she's doing. So immediately they just go in. I'm like, oh, that's bold. Oh, my God. Okay, already my sense of home invasion is like like my dander's up. And then <laughs> the fact that she, I th- I'm like, what kind of movie is this? Because there was a trope immediately in face where she, at, I can't remember what name she called out. I guess it was her lover. It sounded like Eddie. Her, was it Eddie? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but with a, but with an accent, right? So it's like, yeah, like, yeah day or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's getting like... ready for date night because, like, I think there was, oh, like, okay. there's, wasn't there, like, champagne out and, and all these. I think so. Yeah. I was so bowled over. She was getting, she was remember. putting her lipstick on. There's, this is, because even, like, in this, so, the, okay, here's my question for you because yes. clearly we we find out that this is a movie within a movie. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, is what are is what we're watching is that what they're filming or is that the filming of what we're seeing like is that okay so for instance is that the character <laughs> directing it in the movie like the brother-in-law or is what we're seeing like directed by Anthony Waller who directed Mute Witness cuz we're getting all these like close-up shots these like very european angles like we're getting like you know birds eye views of just like walking through hallways and you see like the the wet sure. footprints and all that like cuz clearly yeah. they're not the camera isn't moving it's like stationary where where they are where like when we finally start to see all the film crew right. so that i mean that kind of that throws you off too because it's just like well if this is a movie mm-hmm. why aren't we seeing them interacting more because there are all these different shots here i mean i'd like to think that we're living inside of uh what was an andy the anti-clerk the uh the director yeah. oh got a lot to say about him but anyway um andy <laughs> <laughs> to think that we're kind of like living in his mind's eye or maybe in the mind's eye of the of everybody watching, just kind of seeing how the movie's going to play. Like, okay, it's going to open like this, and it's going to. Yeah. We've shot all that, and we've got it all together, and then finally, like the last thing we see is the thing that is the dud, the thing that they absolutely can't use, which is like her. <laughs> and this has happened in other movies too, mm-hmm. where they don't really pay attention to you know which camera is shooting what. They don't focus on that. They just kind of give you the movie. Then all of a sudden, cut, cut. You know, no, 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 darling, what you're supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. So, um, but the thing was, even before that, I was kind of like disoriented because I noticed that she noticed the feet prints on the carpet and then she opened the, she went out the door and then her, her date, uh, presumably, I guess, is the one who falls. And I was just kind of like, wait, so was he 
behind the door and the guy killed him first or did the guy kill him way in advance like all these logistical yeah. questions so uh, but i'm hooked in i'm yeah. in i have nothing but questions but i'm i'm, I'm well, like what, is this all going to get explained at some point the thing, and then i realize yeah, yeah. The, the thing is that like what they're filming is ostensibly a really bad movie like this this right. andy or whatever is not a good director like this this whole production is bullshit <laughs> everyone on it knows like they're just watching it play out and they're laughing because they're just, they're just ridiculous even like later when the cops are watching the reel they're laughing because it's it's terrible and yeah. it, and that's the thing it's just like the way that it's shot like all these close-ups like that is very european it is very argento and yeah. I, as far as i know anthony waller is an, an american director he also the only other credit that people will probably recognize is that he also wrote and directed an american werewolf in paris Oh, poor thing. <laughs> Not a fan. Uh, it's it's its own thing. I mean, we'll, we'll have that talk if we ever well, get to that movie. But well, I mean, ultimately, simply, I don't think it's a successful film. I think no. I mean, it it, it has its like yeah. you know probably a cult following, very very similar to this. And I can see a lot of similarities, like maybe more so in the humor. Um, a lot of that mm. is is kind of similar there. But I I remember the last time I watched American Werewolf in Paris is yeah. that it does kind of um, fizzle out towards the end, you know, just like that, you know, the, the mm. same pattern of just like, we can't sustain what this story is, even though it's kind of a remake of, of uh, London, uh, but it's sort of the same thing here. So I'm just, maybe Anthony Waller's just like, you know, he has these really fun ideas and he knows how to just kind of like infuse like a very sp specific, like very unique vision into it, but then, just can't really stick to the landing by the end. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I'm i probably more favorable to American Werewolf in, in Paris than you are, but this is definitely, <laughs> this film I would, you know, I would put over that one, you know, by, by a mile. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if, and all that, like you, you still, just because you mentioned these, these European influences, like I definitely feel that. And that's, you know, that's, never more present than this opening scene because you talk about sort of like the Michael Myers how like you know the the opening scene of Halloween because it is kind of like that but that is just kind of like a one track uh you know a tracking shot for, throughout the mm -hmm. whole thing this because right. we, we are cutting back to all those those very intricate shots like it, it just it does give it like it, it elevates the material because when she starts like you know fake dying or just whatever trashing the set because that's kind of i think like that was such a great misdirect because at that point like any other audience would be like okay i'm turning this off i've had enough and but then you but then you see like the guy you know hand him the cigarette and like uh the lighter oh my God. and then passing the flask and you just you're just slowly going through and you see like okay this is a film set here's all these people yeah. watching it that it kind of that that's intriguing. That's just like, okay, like I didn't know that this was, I thought this was just a really bad movie that was like, you know, very mm -hmm. interestingly shot, but a bad <laughs> movie. And I love the fact that she's just wrecking the shit out of the set and he's not at any point yelling cut. Like, what are you doing? Why are you trashing the set? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it'll make a good blooper reel like at the rap party but um, <laughs> but no I mean I, I I I'm right on I'm right there with you as far as like the appreciation of the reveal of the fact that it's not because like, like the way I just described like a minute ago the fact that like one thing goes wrong and they're just like cut and then you hear a bell ring and then everybody's just kind of like all right people let's get back it it wasn't like that there was a much uh uh, uh more I think uh um capable hand that was <laughs> conducting the rhythm of this because I saw that one hand go in and I didn't yet believe or even think that I was on a film set. I just thought, oh, there's two of them murdering her and they're just going <laughs> to sit there and wait it out. Oh, this is dark. And then I saw the other hand with the flask yeah. and I was like, what? What? Is this a conspiracy? And it wasn't until I think we got to the girl's face that I was just kind of like, I mean, she was also just kind of like she was the only one who's kind of like crouching down, who seemed to be really kind of focused on what was going on. I was just kind of like, "Is this a film? Oh, this is a film. Oh, this is yeah. brilliant. I'm really." Well, it's funny that you this. say, and "Is this a title card? Is this a conspiracy?" <laughs> because I mean, it kind of is. <laughs> but, uh, oh, it turns out to right. be one. Yeah. Yeah, and um, then uh, the 
th th that's when we got to see the actress Natasha, who uh, I adored. I wish we could have actually gotten more with her. Um, for a split second, I thought the uh, the sex worker that they had in the the blue movie the, the snuff film that they were shooting yeah. a little bit later was her for a split second and then i kept looking at her face and i'm like no that's just another white lady with you know like plump cheeks but blonde, um, yeah <laughs> blonde and um but i love and even even like that was a thing like i feel like it started out with like the bait and also the misdirects right from the get-go just because of everything we've just described and also because my first impulse when I saw um, Billy signing and then I saw uh, who I didn't know was her sister yet, but when I saw Karen um, like whispering, cause she signed to her and then Karen whispered to her. I was like, yeah. wait, cause I immediately thought deaf. And then I'm just kind of like, Wait, she just whispered to her. Does that mean that she maybe she's only deaf in yeah. one ear? I mean, I'm just this movie's well, bitch. They're at this really point. well. They're really good it's about kind of like explaining that in a way that yeah. works within the context of everything because they do have the translator on set uh, right. between like English and Russian, and she's yeah. kind of this translator like looks at, at Billy and then turns to her sister Karen, and it's just yeah. like explaining to her and they're like, no, 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 she can understand you. She just can't speak. So, yeah. you know, it's, you know, great way of just, you know, establishing detail without being like, as you know, uh, right. Billy uh, is... <laughs> Before is, there's is even a question mute, in my deaf. head, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. It's better to make an assumption as an audience member and then have a question and go, wait, what? And then have it explained for me rather than just kind of like, so everybody, yeah, like you said, like, yeah. <laughs> as you all know, we mm -hmm. are, you know, our special effects artist, mute... <laughs> Billy yeah. is, you know, I'm glad they didn't do any of that. But um, then um, I, 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 I even loved, again, seeds got planted really early. Like, because I got a sense from Karen once it was established that she was a sister. Mm -hmm. Something about her way, I was just like, oh, you're a good sister. Like, even the fact that it occurred to her to stay while they were, like, making their way out into their cars and everything like that. And Billy wanted to go back up and she wanted to go with her. Yeah. And... Uh, Andy was the one who's just kind of like, no, she's fine. She's got her own car. And I'm like, you dick. She cares about her. And also you're in a foreign country. She's alone. She's small. You know, like th you should be in pairs just to make sure nothing happens to her. And again, it happened again where once she got locked in, and the, and and the she's making the noise for the girl. I'm like, see, this is why someone should have gone with her. You should have at least waited for her because yeah. then you could have said, oh, sorry, can you not lock up? My sister's up there, but then there wouldn't have been a movie. But no, God there wasn't. I mean, you got you, thank oh. thank you, Andy, for allowing there to be a movie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he is a very frustrating character. Um, the and his, and the, sort of like the little like slapstick. <laughs> like comedy bits with him are, yes. you know, they're, they're, yeah. it's, it's a jarring tonal shift, especially like in this section of the movie where it's supposed to be really tense. And I, and I, I wasn't really clocking it after a point. So I don't know like how much we checked back with them. Like, I think there's mm. after a point, cause they're at home and they're like, what are we going to do? Are we going to go? And that, cause I think that there must've been like at least 15 minutes where we didn't see where, where Karen mm -hmm. and Andy were, we were just like kind of in right. this studio. By the way, like this fantastic location, oh, practical God. location, like where they filmed this, like that, that hallway, the stairwell, the elevator shaft, yeah. like everything like that. And that's, that's why I question like, was this like written as they went along? Because like every, the, the components of this, studio i mean they they could have obviously scouted the location and found it but it just seems like everything yeah. was so intrinsically part of where this was there was almost like they found it and they're just like okay great we're gonna have this movie but let's like improvise around the location that we have and like let's use this elevator like that, that right. it really felt like found location and we're writing the script as we go through because mm. i mean like the script is it's not a great script um just in terms of like the story i think that the the action and, and like everything happening at the beginning like that's all very well uh executed uh mm -hmm. b based on the performances based on the cinematography um mm -hmm. i love the the shadow work as they're coming up the stairs because it starts as like a very big shadow cast against the yeah. light and like the 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 farther up the stairs they get, the shadow just becomes smaller until it's just like 
the size of the the person yeah. and it yeah. just seemed and it and it did like you mentioned that evasive quality of just like how she was just like running and they just like narrowly would miss her yes. and it, it got to a point where there's a question like they obviously know that she's there but they're like disposing of the body like they're doing their thing so they're like very cognizant that like someone is here and mm. we're gonna find her but it's just yeah. like maybe we have to let her think that we've stopped looking oh, at a point oh god terrifying and mm-hmm. also the in terms of the shadow work this jumps ahead some yeah. but one one of the moments that actually had me gasp i was very audible during this movie yeah. <laughs> but uh i remember when uh it was after everything had gone down um you know the crux of the movie and uh the cops had already come and kind of like you know brushed everything off and the custodian i believe he looks like more like a, he reads like a security guard but i believe they called him the custodian yeah. with his dog is going down to just kind of like close everything and also i suspect like maybe just kind of get a second look and just really you know get a sense of the space just to see like what did they look at and what was there is there anything that's kind of out of place and then when his dog uh, kind of leads him over to, I'm guessing, the furnace. Yeah. Um, he walked toward it, and there was a light. And I couldn't tell. It, it, it was either a really happy accident or uh, really meticulously planned, and bravo. Either yeah. way, bravo, because it, it worked. But when he there's a shot of him looking from a distance at the, um, uh, 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 the furnace, and there's a light behind him that you don't see casting any shadows until he slowly starts to move forward. And I think it's the brim of his hat you see just kind of move into shadow, uh, like right next to him. And for a split second, I thought it was somebody else. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just waiting for somebody to prevent him from making the discovery. And it was just his hat. Well, So then I got to relax the, a little. Yeah, yeah, based on the music cue at that at yeah. that moment as well. Also, I really love the score. But uh, yes. just based on that, because it's the pillar you're talking about. And like the hat kind of makes yeah. it look like there's like something sharp that's like right. coming towards him. And then you yeah. just see like, no, it's his shadow. So, I mean, it might have been a, an accident that like the composer was like, let's let's make a meal out of that. Or, yeah. you know, it was intentional. And we're like, let's let's, you know play with that let's do, let's do something let's, let's do something with shadow yeah. work and i <laughs> and i i would i would lean towards the latter like i think that this is like um i mean i again i have to watch american werewolf in paris uh just to see what uh components uh you know carry over just in terms of mm. anthony waller's style but mm. you know just based on this movie alone it just seems like he is a very visual filmmaker like there's there's so much to it because I mean if this is a movie that was just sort of like you know if it was like a lesser filmmaker who just wanted to shoot something basic like if it was a studio movie where just like let's just hire whoever like none of this would have worked none of it yeah would have worked. it would and the movie wouldn't have even been made no. I mean in this in this uh, day and age well I mean it's there's I, I'm it's it uh, it's so funny because there's elements of it that I'm just kind of like. I think I would have appreciated it had I seen it in 1995 because of the number of tropes it embraces, but also the number of tropes that it completely just turns around and says, no, we're not going to go that route. Um, there are enough movies that have gone that route. We're going to divert your expectations and actually give you a treat and push you in this direction mm-hmm. instead. The key one for me, the hu- the biggest one, um, was... Oh, God, it uh, it breaks my heart just to even think about it now. Like, I'm still... I just watched this today, like, <laughs> literally yeah. about an, an hour or so ago, so I, or an hour and a half, so I, I'm, I'm still, you know, feeling it. It's reverberating within me. But I remember my reaction to um, when uh, poor Billy gets pushed out of that building and falls into that dumpster full of the film canisters. Yeah. And I, again audible response full on whoa you know and i'm sitting alone in my house so this is a good movie and (laughs) i'm just kind of wondering she's disoriented you know is she gonna get up in time to escape him or or anything and luckily like just as he reaches her her sister is there and karen goes over and rushes up to them and starts immediately inquiring about what's going on 
And he starts going, oh, she she fell. I was just, you know, and don't move her, don't move. And he's holding her down. You can see his hands holding her arms in place, threatening, the, not threatening, but saying that like there's a threat, like she could be paralyzed after that fall. If you move her, go get help. She's like, well, I'll stay with her. You go get help. It's like, no, 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 no. And don't move her. I'll just stay her and keep her in place because she doesn't know. And she might move and she might, you know, paralyze herself. She's like, and her sister starts to go. And I'm like, oh, my God, Karen. And I pa that's another pause I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I literally just started writing, like, the creepy fucker Selena kyle Billy. <laughs> and I have my first beef with this movie. Your sister is being pinned by a strange man who claims she fell. You leave her alone with him. And you haven't even got her side of the story yet. And then I unpaused it. And I saw her decide not to go because she saw her sister's eyes. And had that you connection. You need to like watch movies without pausing them. I know, <laughs> but it was my it was that much of a reaction. I was just kind of like, yeah. okay, I have a I have immediately have a, and I wanted to remember the problem I had because yeah. again, that's what this movie does. It's like I can just see you writing were, like an eight page missive, like pause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, Here's my dissertation let's turn this on bullshit back on. Why women need to be smarter in horror movies and why they need to stop being written by men. And I'm like, oh, you immediately proved me wrong. Like, this man obviously knew that I was going to have, as a, an audience member, a reaction like that and gave her, a, you know, an intuitive uh, connection with her sister and also just, like, socially, just off social cues, like, wait a minute, this isn't right, and turned around wordlessly and just kind of said, like, why aren't, you know, why don't you let her go? Wait, hold on. Like, what's going on? Let her go. She's trying to talk to me and she can't do it if she doesn't have her hands free. And it's just kind of like, yes, like maybe the adrenaline got to you in a minute. And that's why you almost made a horrible, hideous mistake. And instead you got him off of your sister because he can't say anything without giving himself away. Yeah. And all uh, I can feel like literally the endorphins like releasing in my body as I describe it, like the relief <laughs> that I felt that like, okay, we're not going to go the way so many movies have gone before where a guy gaslights a woman and she can't help, you know, this person who she cares about. So uh, 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 for that alone, like that was probably the biggest one, but there were a few more throughout this film. It just kept me guessing. And that, that uh, like, I, I understand what you mean by saying like, it's maybe not like the, the greatest script ever written, but there's what they do yeah. with it. And again, like I tend to lean into the personal, the interpersonal, you know, yeah. anyway. Well, for seeing the, this, I just wanted to see these sisters win, you know, ultimately is what I wanted yeah. to see. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, because I kind of, I completely forget the, like the last two thirds of the movie. Um, cause I had it like, usually I, I that, that was my first experience being like, okay. And then this is, this is where it ends. And then like, you know, don't worry about the rest. So this was the first time last night, just kind of what, like I, I'd, I'd seen it maybe twice all the way through, but you know, mm -hmm. this is the first time. Okay. Okay. What, what exactly was it that happened? I remember like, you know, got very absurd and there was some sort of like conspiracy, like government <laughs> conspiracy or something. And I actually found myself enjoying it probably up until like the I, I I'll say I never stopped enjoying it but like just in terms okay. of like following it and just being engaged with it probably around like an hour f eight I clocked it because okay. that's when the the uh the detective the undercover detective showed up um Larson and he because he he just like was dropped into this movie like a deus ex machina of just like i'm here to save you you know like you know she was she was about to be killed and then he came in and it was just like now i'm going to introduce this whole new thing you know it's like almost like this was a spy thriller and you know right, this right. she was just about to be killed and then james bond comes in and 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 there's just like <laughs> you're in the middle of this and you come with me if you want to live and 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 at that point and he's like you know dropping all this exposition and i'm just like okay the movie you know lost the plot and, you know just like it, it lost me and we're just kind of we're just kind of seeing <laughs> shit happen at that point but i from that part because like 30 minutes is the the moment you describe where she she finally like bursts through the door and then falls mm -hmm. over into the the dumpster and yeah. that's that's kind of where it you know it always ended for me 
Uh, but even after that, like, I still feel like there is a lot of tension that's still being played with. Because, you know, we talk about, like, the, yes. the scene where she goes home and she's in the, the bathtub and we know that they're still coming to kill her and they, they break into her yeah. apartment and all that. And I and I feel like it still works. It's just that, like, this is where tonally it starts to jump around. Because, like, like I had mentioned, we're yeah. getting the scenes earlier of of Andy and just, like, you know, cutting him, making his God. famous chili and all that. And that's like it's it's there's a Chili bit too much Clark. of it. Is that what yeah, it? yeah, like it's there. But I think once the movie focuses, it's like okay, we're back with we're with Billy. And then like by this point on, like you know the second act, I guess there's just so much of him, and there's so much of this hijinks, like the the Russian couple who live uh, mm. downstairs, and just like the <laughs> yes. the noise complaints and and all that. Like it's just like the comedy was just a little too much. Um, but you know, when it, when it worked, it worked. So, I mean, my opinion of this is uh, like the movie in, in full is that I think Mm. it would have been a really great short film. Like if it was just, Mm. if you just had this concept of like this mute woman who, you know, gets locked into this building after hours, witnesses this crime. And it's just like, how do I escape? And if the, if the Mm. ending was just her escaping and that was the end of the movie, like that, to me, this would have been perfect, but I think because of you know everything that follows, like what what do you rate this on a on a letterboxed scale? Because oh, I yeah. I would say three point five because I think that everything that's like really works for it, like you know, elevates that score higher. But you know, the the stuff that you know where it eventually lands just kind of diminishes that that greatness. Okay, I was more, I mean, I don't know. The fact that it's a movie, something about, okay, that's another thing. It's like, I I think I, I don't know if this is good or bad. Um, It just kind of is. One thing that I found with the comedy or the more comic uh, 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 moments uh, that were kind of sprinkled about uh, the movie, it gave me a sense that I couldn't even articulate to myself as I was watching it, but it just kind of gave me a sense that, like, I wasn't watching a movie that was going to end in a bleak way like there was hope if there's room for levity and there's room to laugh then there's a light at the end of the tunnel again i'm I'm using that metaphor again but um it and i think i liked that because um i i it still managed to pull the rug out from under me i mean literally like that ends up happening at one point in this movie someone has the rug pulled out from (laughs) under them but um and it's karen rock on pull it pull it pull it but for me, um, I, I because I wanted to see them win so badly, these two sisters in particular, yeah. like I would have been, there were many times throughout the movie where I would have been fine if Andy would have just bought the farm. But <laughs> if the two of them could have made it through, or if, if one of them didn't make it, then it was going to break my heart. But it wasn't until, and it, we'll go right to the very end of the movie, it wasn't until uh, she was standing out there in front of the firing squad, as it were, <laughs> And they and um, then out came Larson, and he just started pelting her with bullets. That I thought, oh, like literally the second it started happening, I started to feel shocked. Like, did he shoot? No, he squibbed her. Because, but I, it kept me guessing right up until that point. Like I was just kind of like, are you a good guy? Are you a bad guy? Like, are you a real cop or are you like? I keep seeing you on this walkie. Are you walking with with cops? Are you walking with like? The, the Russian mafia, or are you like this, uh, these these lords of the underworld? Are you in it with them, or are you? And I and the fact that it wasn't even like completely laid out, I was also grateful for. Was at the very end of the movie, he could have said, "No, I was undercover the entire time. I had to make them think I was one of them in order to." Say, it's like, no, we can get all of that. So I was grateful for that. Um, but I, I, I guess I'm answering your question and not. But <laughs> the, the answer to your question is I think it worked a little bit more in terms of, again, the ride of it all. I was never checked out, so I can't really criticize it. All I can say is if the comedy beats had been extricated, it probably would have been a little bit more tonally consistent, but that's not really something that I require from my movies. I think if it were a short film and they had taken the comedic beats out, it might have been much more high octane and I probably would have had a lot more questions in my head about like how is this going to end is she going to be okay yeah. and is she going to survive um but i don't know if i need that either um because like i said it, it just kept 
my focus. I didn't know what to focus on in a great way. Mm -hmm. um, even like, um, well, uh, I was going to say something earlier and I can't remember what it was now. But um, just in terms... Uh, 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 I'm hitting a break. Anyway, okay. Well, ultimately, the rating I would give it, I'm thinking around four stars because I'm that impressed with what they did with what they had. Okay. Um, and I haven't, I haven't had it in my life long enough for it to be higher than that, but it could. I could see yeah. it going higher if I yeah. keep watching this and if I keep rediscovering. Yeah. But I don't know what the second view is. No, be that's like, right. No, because I would say, say like yeah. uh, first act, five stars. Everything else, uh, oh, okay. I don't know. But like the, because it's just like we get to like once. Larson shows up it's just like stuff is happening and that's just what it feels right. like it's just like stuff is happening until until the end of the movie and it's just this absurd um oh the, the police are in on it and like it, like it's just like it's so much the scope of this thing just became so much larger and it's just the movie itself the scope of the movie of what they're filming yeah. is not that so it just it just felt disproportionate of everything like it just like it, it, it was so fantastical like we're gonna tell this this huge story and it's like you know less is more um <laughs> <laughs> it can be it which can is be. which is which is a lesson that you know i've had to learn you know like writing uh my own script you know it's just like you know don't you don't need to to go bigger and i think that that's one of the things that had this movie kind of maybe focused on just like okay let's just like let's just pull it back a bit here like pump the brakes you know what where can we go with this that you know still is in within the realm of possibilities of like the story that we started with just in terms okay. of like these these two because i mean like the the most threatening uh adversaries in this movie were the the two uh, the the uh, Arcady and La Laosha, uh, I, I believe is their name. The what the ones that sure. the one the yeah. two making this stuff the film. fuckers yeah yeah, um and they're you know they're you know taken out around like the you know the hour point in the movie and then it's just like it becomes right. like this I mean I guess they're Alec Guinness which we'll talk about in a second but the the just like you know all these nameless police officers and just like these people in on this conspiracy and stuff like that. They're just like, you know, I, w it doesn't feel like there is a real, like actual tangible threat to them. It's just like, at this point, it's just like, we're just throwing everything out there and it's gonna like, you know, it, it ends up in just like probably the most comedic thing ever. And, you know, like the, the comedy for me, like where it works is, you know, some of the decision, like the, the stylistic decisions, like whenever, and they even mention this when they're talking about the snuff films, uh, when like the ambassadors there and the and the two police officers and and they're just saying the whole idea is just like there's something about like capturing the moment of a victim's uh, face right before yeah. death, like that's just something that I guess is so valuable to them. And that moment happens in the movie, and every time it does, there's this like this this jump in, like it just like you know. Dun, 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 as it goes yeah. closer and like the score does yeah. that thing which like I love like it's 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 such a hilarious beat and they do it I think like four or five times because the first time we see it is with the prostitute uh, that they're filming at the beginning and then it's with yeah. Billy in the moment that you talked about where Karen is like going to run away and then she turns around and sees Billy and just like oh no I know that expression that's the look of someone who's about to you know, thinks that they're about to die. And then the, 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 I guess the bad cop tied up in the car at the end before it blows up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, no, just things like that. Like, I like that comedy. I felt like the, you know, the, where they, you know, really tried to go a little bit more slapstick. Like when she pulled the rug and the guy accidentally shot the guy. Uh, oh, that was under the awesome. Chin. It was awesome, <laughs> but it was just like, it, it just like, it, from that point on, it felt like, you know, okay, are we in an Austin Powers movie now? Like what, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go quite that far. Like, because I mean, Austin Powers. Like, I, I, I don't know if I've ever taken a moment of those movies yeah. seriously, and I don't think I'm supposed yeah. to either. But um, I will say, um, I, I will. Uh, just in response to like you, you, because like you bringing up like uh, Larson, like sitting there, like bringing up the whole thing about like you know looking in the eyes of like people, because he's talking about how he's witnessed you know these snuff films and he's trying to catch these people and the thing that motivate or the thing that like haunts him about it really yeah. um is you know the the look in the eyes of people like as they're about to be killed and everything like that um i wrote like a 
paraphrase of it because he said a lot more but it was something to the effect of uh where is it i don't even remember anyway he's sitting there he's saying oh yeah flashing across you can basically see the movie i don't even know where my notes are anyway okay so he says it <laughs> <laughs> sorry folks i'm stumbling here it's a it's a weird day so <laughs> but larson is basically like saying reiterating the thing that has already been kind of like spelled out in terms of like what motivated karen to stay with billy and what <laughs> Billy can't shake about the sex worker getting killed and everything like that. So immediately for me, aside from it, like planting seeds for like some, you know, potentially comedic moments uh, from your vantage point, it's uh, for me, it also prevent pr pr creates a link and also kind of gave me a little bit of insight as to like what is motivating Larson, what he's fighting for. And then when we start to think he's a bad guy, it's not just kind of like, I thought you were a good guy. You're a bad guy. You suck. It was like, you fucking told a story about what it's like to look into the eyes of someone when they know they're going to die and how that like haunts you and moves you to like, you know, fight for their justice and everything like that. And now you're a traitor. You're an asshole. Like I got so much more enraged at him <laughs> because of the level of betrayal, because like there, there, there's betrayal, but then there's also just kind of like putting on a performance as someone, you know, and pretending to care about something that you don't. So when I thought he was a bad cop, I was just kind of like, you're a sociopath. I hate you. And then I realized, you're not a sociopath. You have a cover. Fuck, this movie keep can't, can't just <laughs> let me relax. Yeah. So that worked for me. But I did want to ask in terms of the tonal consistency, because another thing that came up for me that I actually, that I don't think did what this mm -hmm. movie did in terms of just kind of like being... You know, like, here's some lighter moments, here's some whatever that I think was just kind of, like, um, felt like one tone. Uh, I, I'd have to see it again, but I haven't yeah. seen it in a long time. But when I saw Hush, do you prefer something like that in terms of, like, a character's trajectory or, or, the, or the, the movie's course that it runs? Because I don't remember like a Hush, lot of Mike Flanagan? in that one. Uh, yeah, the one with uh, uh, John, what's his name? I'm not prepared to. Well, it's, yeah, <laughs> the, one with the, the deaf Netflix, woman. The, 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 the one with the deaf woman. The, yeah, the Netflix. Yeah, the Netflix one. movie. Um, yeah, the it, I mean, it's been so long since I've seen it. I remember Me too. Uh, really enjoying it, but it's it definitely Me had too. a much different uh, vibe and style. That it's you know it's really hard to to say that. I think like a movie like that is really even just like in the the way that it is films like just mike flanagan mm -hmm. is a very like you know north american like just like very american yeah vision yeah. with with things this i mean maybe like mute witness can get away with it because it is like first of all set in russia it's filmed like it's a, a european movie and maybe there is yeah. like more opportunity to get that levity in there but it was more like the way that i saw it was like it was the intensity like when, when it was intense that intensity was really high that right. that's the, the thing that was working for me because I mean like I don't need a movie to be serious or anything like okay. or just you know because it, it's hard to say it's been so long since I've seen Hush um, okay. but you should put that on the list <laughs> no because then I have to get Netflix and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no I I don't know. It's it, and it, and these are movies that are like twenty. When did that? When did Hush come out? Two thousand seventeen or something. Sure. So it's like over something twenty like maybe, years. Maybe even earlier. Maybe even earlier. Well, let's just yeah. say twenty twenty years uh, separating them. Um, sure. So it's it's very different, and that's the thing. Like this, this is a movie from nineteen ninety five. It doesn't even really have that that 90s vibe to it like it, it has i mean obviously it has a, like a very pre-scream vibe to it sure um but just because it is so european it's it's not uh it, it doesn't feel like anything else that was coming out at that time no no i can't think of anything that i would hold like as a parallel even though we've made like these references to like other things and i'm sure there were more that are going to come up yeah. but um it's it's it, it's I, i'm not kind of sitting there going like oh i get it this is a 
fill in the blank, you know, kind of movie. Yeah. This is the sub subgenre this movie belongs to. Yeah. It does seem to kind of occupy. I'd say I mean, at most like '90s indie horror, maybe. '90s <laughs> indie, but there's even there's even like maybe like more '80s in there because like w one mm. correlation that you know I, I would think of with this is uh, the movie Stage Fright, which is also Italian, mm. where. Mm. There's just like this similar scenario where the 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 final girl at the end is sort of like trying right. to get out of this building, like find the key and get out of this uh, theater, and yeah. the killer is there, and not like either. It's not really clear if like the killer is unaware of her presence or just kind of like biding his time and waiting until you know. As far as she knows, he doesn't know that she's there and it's kind of a similar right. situation here and so it's like that setup felt very 80s to me but yeah it does it definitely has like yeah. that indie 90s like that early 90s vibe to it right you never forget the look in the victim's eyes i just found it okay mm. <laughs> i just wanted to say it that and that <laughs> moment at the end like is, like where was it set up that that car was like gonna blow up i don't know but by that point i was so just kind of like what? Like, I can't well, that, relax. No, that's the that thing. It's just, like, so, so much crazy shit was happening. I guess it's because he's, like, that's so weird that they didn't... I forget what he said, that they didn't want the the, the diskette, with the, is what they kept calling yes. it. Yes. The whole, I mean, yeah. the whole diskette thing, because that's, that's another thing. Because I remember seeing that at the earlier in the movie when she knocks over the, the thing and yeah. the diskette kind of goes sliding mm -hmm. under the... the the door, wherever that was, the the boiler, whatever that thing was. Um, yeah, and I didn't think anything of it because it was just like, it was never relevant. And then it became relevant again because they're just like, where's the diskette? Where's the diskette? And it just felt like, it, it felt like another instance of like, oh, wait, we need to go back and just like add in this shot of this thing sliding under the door because we're making this movie up as we go along. But the, um, I mean, the reason why I believe that, uh, and this kind of ties mm -hmm. into Alec Guinness, uh, being in this movie, he is uncredited, by the way, but uh, he, he has a cameo in it. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but that footage was actually filmed in 1985, so 10 years before the movie came out. Oh, my God. So Anthony Waller had That's met crazy. Alec Guinness uh, by chance or whatever, and he just asked him, like, you know, would you you know, be interested in just, like, filming, like, this one scene, this one, like, he didn't even know what it was, but it's just, like, this is what it is, like, these were the lines, it takes place in a uh, underground parking garage, like, you're in the car, and you just sort of, like, lean forward from the shadows, and you just say this stuff, and that was, like, the cameo. So it's, like, it's almost like he, he filmed this with the idea that it was going in a different movie, and it never happened, and then he had that footage and was just like, well, I'm going to use this for something else 10 years later. Right. So Alec Guinness was just like, sure, why not? I guess he really hit him off, hit it off with him and oh, did the, didn't, without being paid, just like did it for free of his own time, just like spent, wow. you know, a couple hours. They filmed this, this shot. And I guess in the movie, they, it's the scene where he, you know, he, he says the stuff and then they just, you know, have, you know, obviously in this version, it's set at the back of the studio. It's not underground, but they, you know, movie magic. They made it look yeah. like it wasn't. And then they just showed like the Laosha or whatever talking to him. So we didn't, you know, have to see Alec Guinness, who this year, like 1995 would have been 10 years older and retired from, from acting. And then for the, the end of the movie, when he sort of leans forward and looks out the window, that's the same shot of him uh, or he kind of like sits back. It's the same shot, just yeah. reversed. Oh my God. That is so cool. So yeah. if this movie is plan nine from outer space, yeah. then Alec Guinness is Bella Lugosi and Anthony Waller is Edward D. Wood, that's, Jr. D. Wood Jr. That's actually the, the perfect way to, to look at it. This is the, the Ed Wood of, uh, of 90s <laughs> indie horror. <laughs> Um, I also, I mean, I had forgotten, I, I remembered seeing something slide out of the, the purse and out of view uh, when um, poor Billy, like, I keep calling her poor Billy, <laughs> poor, poor Billy tumbles Billy. over that coat rack and everything and she had to just start collecting everything and I, and I, I thought she saw it 
and just kind of like let it go because they can't see it so it doesn't look like anything's been tampered with yeah. but I thought ooh that's probably going to be significant later and the movie made me completely forget about it until it was time like literally they were asking for the diskette and I'm like what diskette because also I didn't I couldn't tell what it was yeah. so I just saw something you know reflective slide under something yeah. so I was just kind of like Whoa. then when it, she real started oh because that was another thing I really appreciated she was sitting there with Larson while he's driving and he's asking her to remember <laughs> <laughs> so she just kind of like gets this distant gaze on her face and she starts having the flashback of the murder and everything like that again. Yeah. And she almost kind of like pulls out and just kind of like looks back at him and is like, keep remembering or something like that. Mm -hmm. So she does and she, 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 she goes back and I just kind of love that he can kind of see the movie on her face like he can, or he can see the doo -doo 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 yeah. but you haven't found it yet because the light bulb isn't above your head. Mm -hmm. So but then she remembers it sliding under. I'm like, oh, that thing. So like I said, like this movie yeah. totally. Well, I guess like because like, I, I remember <laughs> that's that's an element that I forget about it. But once you know i saw it again i'm like wait does that come up and then when they mentioned the diskette i'm like oh, okay you know i now right. pieces are starting to come back to me but what is on the diskette do we even i guess it's just like protected information you know it's like naming names or something like why this why this woman had this diskette to begin with like it just it, it that's you know that's where the movie kind of loses itself it's just like oh we're just gonna have all this stuff here that just you know happens and, <laughs> they're, they're, and the I guess, movie needs to movie <laughs> yeah i mean in, in order yeah. to to enjoy it you just gotta have to just roll with it mm -hmm. I, I just presumed it had like a lot more of those snuff films that they were gonna sell to him and that that they were going to get the money for and then they were they were going to go on and Ugh. what do whatever you do with a snuff film i guess sell them on the street yeah. and get people to pay top do dollar you, for them i don't know what you do with snuff do films. you remember the movie eight yeah. millimeter yeah i never saw it but i remember yeah the, the poster, Nic just nicholas cage's face nicholas cage because yeah. it's like uh this he's a he's a private investigator uh, if memory serves and a client of yeah. his uh, this old lady finds uh, this snuff film in her late husband's collection and he's she's like I don't know what this is like this is really disturbing but like can you please like look into this so I just want to make sure that like the woman in this movie wasn't actually murdered um, yeah. so it just like kind of takes him down this like rabbit hole and I love movies like that where just like we're going down this like dark twisted path and um Joaquin Phoenix is in it. Uh, James Gandolfini. Uh, uh, I think uh, is it Peter Stromer? He might be in it as well. Maybe I'm misremembering. But uh, no, it's like it's got a, a great cast. Uh, but it's just like it, it, what I think of like movies about snuff films. I'm just like, oh, eight millimeter. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and new witness now. So it's that. Okay, cool. I'll have to yeah. see 8mm then. Like, I was always intrigued by it, but I just never got around to it. Yeah. Um, I also remember feeling, uh, speaking of just in terms of tropes, like, I literally exclaimed something I don't think I've ever exclaimed before that I've only ever heard in reference to, like, on, like, sitcoms from the 80s when somebody's watching a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And to convey the fact that they're watching a horror movie, they have, like, ooh, spooky music happening or you know something like that and then somebody just goes don't open that door i did that to billy when she was in her apartment on her phone call her little computer you know wah, yeah. wah, 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 my voice, name is billy hughes call. yeah right <laughs> with with karen <laughs> and then she gets a knock at the door or, or i think it was the ring, the doorbell ring and she yeah. got up and thank God her sister heard it and knew that there was something going on again. Like, I'm just kind of like, thank you for making these people intuitive and smart and worried because they should be yeah. uh, based well, off the of everything. Si the sister happens, was, but, but there, like Billy was kind of inconsistent. There'd be times where she was really smart, but then there'd be times where it's just like, OK, come on. <laughs> Well, and I then, was upset that she was opening the door. I was like, okay, you don't yeah. see anybody out there and you're going to just like, that latch doesn't do shit. And anyone <laughs> no, you just who kick has in to the live door. like just, that, yeah. exactly. You, you know, you're not going to get in this apartment unless you push hard with your yeah. hand. But, <laughs> and the fact that, about, and then the, the thing that made me kind of like, I, it's, it's not like a, a deal breaker for me or anything like that, but the fact that, the, he pulled out the bolt cutters and was getting ready. Like that was that was working for me. I was like, oh my god, he's gonna cut the thing when he could just 
push it. But I thought it was funny. Yeah. But then she pulled up the umbrella and I was kind of like, yeah, jab him. And she didn't. She's trying to get the bolt cutters to prevent them from cutting them. I'm like, get him. Your umbrella has a sharp point. Put yeah. it in his esophagus. If Put it, it worked, in his aorta. If Sydney could do it on Billy Loomis. You yeah. Know. Billy so could I was... do it on, uh, what was his, Alexi? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I was losing my mind. And then it just kind of yeah. broke my heart that she ran over to the window to the guy who was peeping on her just moments yeah. before and just totally Oh, she just like, him. like, <laughs> she was getting, I was surprised by how much nudity she showed because I didn't remember any of that. Uh, and oh, okay. then it, because then it like kind of like it, it followed out when she's in the car and she's changing and, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Larson kind of like, takes a peek he's just like oh okay like takes a peek and then she yeah. she just looks at him and smiles and 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 just like kisses him like thank you for saving my life uh yeah which was a sweet moment um yeah. but she just like yeah she just like you know would go back and forth on like can i trust this guy it was just getting kind of tedious uh after a while they're just like you literally showed him everything and then kissed him yeah. you know like <laughs> and like come for dinner or whatever the um, yeah right yeah that was sweet yeah. Yeah. um especially the way he did it because i don't know it's kind of like it's like uh, having like beginner's pronunciation because he just, like he seemed to do it really really large over his chest like ah oh, dinner you know like when he <laughs> before he got in the car but yeah. um oh i also just uh i remember thinking like it did work for me the sense of humor while i'm also feeling get her get her get her get her while she's out running uh the uh shall we say the killer of the two like there's mm-hmm. creepy killer and there's creepy cameraman so okay. killer guy um is like after her and he's um trying to get into the bathroom and i am just like beside myself and i love that she opened up the medicine cabinet like just looking for anything and she's chucking shit at him she's just so proactive and then she opens the medicine cabinet and sees something called stress tabs which i'm guessing are to relieve stress, like pills yeah. you take or something like that. And I thought, in a situation like that, yeah. that's a good thing to have, you know, like cinematically for me to go, uh, yeah, yeah no, you're going to need them, darling. But. I was getting uh, <laughs> Shining from that. Uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, Shelley totally. Duvall, But also uh, Child's Play 1 with the, the knife, except we didn't get that. <laughs> 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 There yeah, was actually get that. well because she's mute, but there there was actually one moment when she's <laughs> in the no when she's in the bottom of the elevator and she's hiding in the garbage bags and they're shining yeah. the flashlight and it sort of like it illuminates the body like you can see the face of of the woman in the garbage bag right, right. next to her and she opens her mouth to scream but nothing comes out but the score does this like. Yeah this like tingly thing like that is like her screaming but through the music which i thought mm-hmm. was like really effective i love elevators yeah. like that by the way those old creepy <sighs> things like just like in horror movies where those exist we had one mm-hmm. at the uh the, the nightclub that i used to work at because that was sort of like oh you know God. we would transport like bottles and garbage uh from like the upstairs or downstairs like by, at the end of the night and we would all kind of like scare each other at at this place because like the building was haunted there were ghosts so there were like a number of times where you know i like someone would sneak up on me and just like that or whatever and i fell for it um but i remember one time i um was like trying to scare one of the busters and i went into the elevator because you can like climb up because that's how you get to the roof. Like you're you. Oh the, no. the elevator goes up to the to the top floor, and then you climb up the ladder, and, and there's a like sort of a ledge there and a hatch to go out onto the roof. But I just climbed up the elevator. I stood on top of the elevator and like <laughs> let him go in for like however long he was doing it. Just like I'm just gonna wait and I'm gonna like scare the shit out of him. <laughs> and <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I, I would have killed you. I would have yeah. been, and it would have been accidental. It would have been self defense or yeah. just you know reflexive, and I, that's what I would. have Well, no, because like that, like what? Well, <laughs> it wouldn't have been because I was like we we're separated by like a cage sort of thing. But this is one of those things that has like the wooden uh, gate, uh, and then like a yeah. metal. It's like a it's it's a wooden gate, a metal gate, and then there was like another metal door on the outside. So it's just like really sure. like heavy duty and that's why i always thought like oh that yeah. place would be like a really good for a horror movie too just because of that and and because it was like yeah. freaky to be there 
like yeah. late at night alone or just like any time yeah. uh, alone. Like when it, freight, especially when freight it's dark. elevator, yeah, yeah, feel like I mean a lot of freight elevators that I've uh, been in in places that I've worked have mm-hmm. that feel where you have to you know shut the cage and turn the thing and then open the uh, big you know the, the horizontal doors and everything like that. Yeah. But um, uh, that, I, uh, sp- speaking of though, like uh, <laughs> uh, potential scares and everything like that, like I I was really really happy. Uh, in the kill scene when she eliminated killer uh, killer killer man creepy killer, killer one guy. yeah um, yeah when she threw the hair dryer in that bathtub I was applauding and, and the special effects yes and <laughs> it was <laughs> yes just watching it go through I'm like die motherfucker I was so ready and then that, that's again like the thing like everything that followed it was just kind of like um because I you know what I think it was this is what it was they bought so much time and got so much slack cut for them, the creepy killer and creepy camera guy, um, when the cops came into the scene and they were investigating every accusation that she made and none of the real pertinent questions were being asked like, okay, the woman who was being killed, where is she then? You know, like if, (laughs) like, I mean, I I appreciate Karen protecting the film and all of that, but it's like, okay, well, if there was a woman who who was murdered and she wasn't murdered, and this woman is mistaken. Where is the woman? Let No one brought that up once, so that was really making me upset. The mm-hmm. fact that they were chuckling the whole time they were speaking this other language, and the three Americans are just kind of like sitting there like out of the loop, like not understanding like what's going on, but visibly you can tell what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the, the, the justice, the injustice of it all was so just grating on my person that I wondered like, is this what the movie, this can't be... Like what the rest of the movie's gonna be, just them like gaslighting her and ju- just like preventing her from making any kind of progress. That when we finally, I think the fact that they were taken out as early as they were was a boon to me because um, I, I, I'd I seen them get the upper hand and I don't like that world. I like the world that happens later where one of them gets electrocuted and the other one gets shot by a guy who. Yeah. you're wondering like well, is it a shady cop is it a cop at all or is it just another mafioso guy who's just kind of like you know dressed up as a cop which is who what i think they were and then, but i'm still yeah. don't know for sure well i mean <laughs> in whatever world this was like those cops were terrible i'm talking about the ones who were investigating it because i mean if they, they were doing yes. a proper job they would have looked all over that building they would have found i mean i'm assuming that they didn't throw the body in the furnace yet so they right. had her somewhere but i mean there was more that could have been done there was more cops that could have been called but like the thing yeah. is like this and this is the stupidity here of just the fact that arcady even like takes the prop knife and starts stabbing him with like making a big yeah. fucking mess and doing that while there's yeah. two cops they even draw their guns like yeah. they're gonna shoot him i'm just like why would you do that like you could like especially in this day and age where mm-hmm. police are just shooting left, right, and center, that you're going to do yeah. s- something stupid in front of police mm-hmm. like that. And they just, yeah. all they do is, like, they yell at him and then, like, pull him off, and they're just like, see, he's a joke. Fake blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if and that's Dracula one, there. <laughs> that's probably another point where it might have helped, the fact that it was in Russia, because you really don't know. I don't know from Russian police. I don't yeah. know what you have to do to set them off or anything like that to get them to shoot you. If this would have taken place in Chicago, the fact that they didn't shoot a guy that they yeah. saw actively stabbing another guy, uh, even just to kind of like deter him, not to not shoot to kill, but just to like get him to stop, like get him in the leg or get him in the arm or yeah. the shoulder or something like that. Yeah, that wouldn't have been believable. So, yeah. but I mean, yeah, it was, that was infuriating. Also, the fact that, like, they they never separated the two men. I, that was another thing I was wondering, like, why aren't these two men being separated and asked questions like, where is the the woman, the actress then, in this movie that you were making? Like, because if they come up with different answers, guess what? They're lying. And mm-hmm. now, you, I mean, oh, God. Yeah, they, they, I should seriously consider them for the cherry picker. But, <laughs> 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 but then again, like, I loved what followed when... The danger, because I thought the danger was in one place, and then all of a sudden she seems to be in a safe place with Larson, Billy does, after she electrocutes one guy and evades the other one. And then he's stuck there, like, unconscious, basically. Oh, because that was another thing. 
the 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 fact that like she's there naked and you know just basically like a, a robe ba barely containing her nudity and the guy seemed to have nothing but like nefarious uh uh, uh unholy intentions and everything like that like i didn't like the uh the the creepy camera guy when he had her bent over the table and everything oh, like that Lyosha. and i yeah, that guy. Yeah. Um, I didn't like. I was. I was kind of like, oh, don't go this way, movie. I really don't need this. And then, thank God, da, 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 there's Larson, and he <laughs> beats him over the head because he knows they're no good. And even though he watched the movie, she's still in danger. Or mm -hmm. he may as well check in with her and just let her know there is something going on. So I need to get your side of the story. Like I love whatever it is that brought the two of them together. But then when they leave, and then Karen and fucking uh, Andy. Andy get back to the apartment and find him there. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, just, I just said pause, the... pause, pause. Karen and Andy? Is her last name Barkley? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I didn't even think about that! <laughs> because they're love interests and not a mother and a son, though they may as well be the way that he like constantly has her going like, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't. Is there a Chucky in this movie? <laughs> or a Is Mikey? Is there a Billy and hey, Mikey. Child Play? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... I, 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 I'd be seriously shocked yeah. if, the, if it was intentional. They're both pretty vague you know american names yeah. like just you know every, every yeah every, well like, um yeah. uh the argento it feels like every movie like the most uh common names uh that especially for characters who are supposed to be american are mark and sarah if you go like look at any argento <laughs> movie like every single one of them there's a mark and there's a sarah uh nice. there's a, and there's a few carlos as well but i, I feel like those are more like mm -hmm. the, a, a, italian locals Right. Um, so yeah, I'm, but that's the thing. It's just like Anthony Wall. Like as far as I know, he's he's an American filmmaker. Maybe I am. Actually, let me. I should probably check that <laughs> because I'm just like <laughs> do your oh, due yeah, diligence, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. But I loved the fact that like they they kind of discover creepy camera guy. I'll never remember his name. And they run into a room together. I don't remember if it's the bedroom or wherever it is, but we just see them run behind a closed door and immediately hear the screaming. I, I just wrote the exchange. She's like, get the chair, get the chair. And Andy's like, what chair? And she goes, the chair! <laughs> just screaming yeah. her head off at him because he's not helpful in a crisis at all. He's already made that abundantly clear, but he's, he's just going on being... You know, pretty inept. He gets yeah. better as the movie progresses, but okay, I like so here, her scream at him. So here's here's <laughs> here's the sitch. Uh, uh, yeah. My my faux pas. Uh, he's British, but uh, yeah. was born in Beirut. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's British. Huh. Well, he he grew up in both the Middle East and England. So there you go. That's that's why the movie looks so amazing because uh, European vision. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he just wanted to shoot it in America. Okay, yeah, and then okay. ended up shoot, shooting it in. Yeah, America. and I guess I just I'm got because it's just like American movie. werewolf in Paris. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But at a certain point, yeah, I mean, I did kind of, just, I just wrote in all caps, I am so confused. And it wasn't like in a bad way. Like I wasn't like, where is the plot going? I just didn't know emotionally what context yeah. I was supposed to, you know, who am I supposed to hitch my wagon to? Obviously Billy, but who can she rely on? And um, not many people. I just... <laughs> but, and then I laughed again when Billy and, uh, not, not Billy, uh, where Andy and um, Karen are running through uh the hallway in the warehouse toward the end and he's got the gun and he's just dropping bullets as he's trying to like load them into the gun yeah. and Karen's running ahead of him she just kind of run looks behind her and does like a like a com comedic take like a oh you know like <laughs> come on <laughs> well they were just getting idiot. in the way at that point they did they did manage to uh knock out the one guy and then handcuff him to the the stairs that's true as a, as a that's team true. But yeah they were they were just getting in the way at that point and at that point it did feel kind of like goonies for adults i can acknowledge that like <laughs> just kind of like a, bu a bunch of you know sweet 
you know, people who care about each other, who are all kind of like in over their heads and out running things, just kind of like trying to make the best they can out of it. And, you know, and you make a movie about that with a few laughs here and there and loyalty. And that's what you got. That's what I. <laughs> and then all I could think after I knew that, like I said, I knew that Larson had to help um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Billy squib herself and everything. But I, all I could think was poor Karen having to witness that, not knowing yeah. that her sister is squibbed. What's um, what's the line from Goonies? Goonies never die. Yeah, don't say that. Never say that. Goonies never say die. Yeah. Muties never say die. <laughs> Muties. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I think it's it's Goonies never die. <laughs> Or is I it, thought he said Goonies never, never say, say die. die? I think okay. it's Goonies ne yeah, I think it's Goonies okay. never say die. Because I remember the I, we played it in the video store I worked in on a loop, and I remember the rhythm of sweet yeah. little uh, Sean Astin uh, having to say it over and over again. Yeah, uh, Goonies never say die. But, I need to um, watch that. Anyway. It's 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 come up in conversation. Um, yeah, it was never my movie. Like I, that, oh, it was really? one of those movies that. Well, it was one of those movies that was like again, kind of horror adjacent when I was really little and I think I saw it way too young because um what's his name the hey you guys Slaw. I can't remember his name even yeah. that guy uh scared the shit out of me and I turned it off I just couldn't watch he it always anymore. reminds me of um Jason Voorhees in mm. I guess it's like part three or part four whenever the mask comes yeah. off and it's just like oh it's just like it's just like three. a more misshapen Jason Voorhees yeah, slightly cartoony or yeah. <laughs> part three. But um, all I could think was Karen's going to need therapy. She's seen her sister shot to death. And then, <laughs> and then, but I mean, she seemed pretty relieved and pretty unfazed by it at the end. But then, like, fuck Andy with that squib, that last squib. I was just kind of like, God, this movie just won't end. Like, and in a, not in a bad way, but just like, it keeps kind of like giving us these final beats. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and um, the uh, the only other I think criticism I think I have for the movie because it was like one of the last things that happened and I was like you can't just it, it's when uh, Larson gets out of the car after it explodes and the stunt man who has exited the car is quite visibly on fire his yeah. back is and then I'm thinking oh somebody better run to him get him a blanket get him a blanket no blanket. He's not on fire anymore. Once we cut back and it's actually Larson, yeah. he's just laying there with his hands like over his face. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, the movie's over anyway. Yeah. Whatever. Cool. All right. Yeah. Walk off into the sunset. I'm. And what do they? I and where do they go myself. from there? It's just like, are like she's dead, sort of. Like they, how are they going to get out of the country? With that, is, I, I feel like there's going to be more hurdles. But they're just talking about like, yeah, come over for dinner. There's like a whole bunch of people who are very powerful, <laughs> who think you're dead and could still very much yeah. kill you. And that's another, they just, yeah. they're just like, someone's going to clean this shit up and they all just take off. <laughs> Maybe the American, if, American embassy will step in effectively at, at yeah. this particular point and keep them you, safe. Well, you may be, but I mean, they also have to think, like they, I guess, rigged his car to blow up. So it's just like someone was going to right. show up there, but like, they're not finishing that movie. Clearly. <laughs> also, I couldn't tell when they when she was in the uh, elevator shaft, uh, yeah. Billy, um, and she started seeing like the face, you know, through the trash bag and everything. Yeah. Did she see two faces, or did she see it from different angles at different times? I couldn't tell if she was maybe one of it was bodies. the mask. Because they had multiple bags, and obviously, yeah. like some of them had like the bloody clothes in them. Some of them just had trash and well, everything. Like but I, I said, I, maybe and one of them had the, the mask. Yeah, it was just the yeah. mask. I don't know. But I, I did wonder for a time, like, is this is, is this happened multiple times, and they're just like dumping the trash out now? I, I couldn't tell. Again, so many questions. Yeah. So many questions with this movie. Yeah. So I appreciate it. That's that's. I don't know if I really star have, at least. At I don't least. know if I have any questions. I just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, Eli we'll Roth, American Werewolf in Paris. Eli yes, Roth Eli mentioned Roth. this movie uh, when he was doing press for Thanksgiving, and he oh. like he he had just cited it as like it was like an inspiration, uh, or it's just like one of his favorite movies like growing up. And then he said that it was like in sure. an inspiration for Thanksgiving. And I saw that movie, and I mean mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. But um, <laughs> I don't. There was nothing because I was excited when he said that. I was just like, oh my god, there's like mute witness. Nothing uh, in that movie I found, like, at any point was just like, where's the mute witness? So I don't know if maybe you okay. have a, a, a different opinion on that. 
I think I have an idea, but we'll, like you said, we'll cover that when we. Uh, well, I'm asking you right now. Don't don't skirt around it. <laughs> Well, I have to see the movie again just to kind of like specifically, but I mean, just in terms of like the layering, like yeah. I just remember as Thanksgiving was progressing, um, it, 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 it kept ending too, you know, <laughs> like here's one thing that you think is oh, just so like, that's, oh, okay, relief. So that's the, the inspiration you're, 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 you're thinking of, not really anything stylistic. With, without, ha- without going, I mean, you just ran this across, across me, my desk right now so i mean i have to go back and watch the movie well, and see it. heaven forbid i ask you to remember up. things that you see you know i can't remember anything, particularly today my memory everybody who's listening is like eddie can't remember anything <laughs> like, <laughs> i can't remember the right, right words i can't remember anybody's name i can't remember the lines they say like oh, yeah. obviously my memory is not in great shape at this particular time and i so. always i always get shit for not remembering things though <laughs> So give me all the shit you need to to I, feel no, better. No, it's okay. I don't need to do that. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the cherry picker. It's not like we killed people. On purpose. All right, we need a cherry on top. I think this is, you know, probably we can agree. Billy. Yeah, pretty cut and dry. Yeah, we don't, yeah we don't absolutely. Need to, we don't, I think we don't need to no, her sister deserves a shout out, but it's definitely Billy. Yeah. Like she had to very, go through all of it. Very, very resourceful, uh, just in terms of like the, the limitations. Uh like a a, yeah. a a different kind of final girl. Like how many mute yeah. final girls do we have? So absolutely, absolutely like one one to add to the 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 list. But uh, And it's hard to be the one person who's seen something and believes that it happened and you have to now convince everyone around you. Yeah. in various languages that it happened and b- to be disbelieved for as long as she was, yeah. Absolutely. Even though it was all one night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but still, rough night. So, so last week, we asked you who deserves to die the most in Dawn of the Dead 2004. Yeah. I nominated yeah. Andre, uh, not to be confused mm-hmm. with Andre Felix, our no, not at former all. editor, who, who, when I put that poll up, uh, messaged me like, "What's this about?" Uh, so not you, not you, Andre. Uh, not you, Andre. Mackay Pfeiffer, Andre, yes. versus uh, Ty Burrell, Steve, uh, mm-hmm. in Dawn of the Dead, and uh, across yeah. Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube, the final vote was 195 for Andre uh, versus 502. For Steve, Ooh. bollocks to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hear what the people had to say. Maybe you have a vocal majority. Would it, would it be a vocal minority? Or well, maybe oh, you have okay. a vocal majority. Majority, okay. like maybe you have <laughs> a majority of the comments. I don't see words aren't working for me today. It's okay. Just it's read okay. It. okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Neon planes, Andre. I can't wish death upon Phil. Uh, is that the characters from Modern Family? I don't. I've never Phil. seen an episode. I've so never that, seen. Yeah, sure. no, I've seen clips, but I'm just assuming because I've I, seen clips I'm just too. like that guy's from Modern Family. It must be Phil. Yeah, so, Ty uh, Burrell and the orange juice commercials. That's all I know him from. Oh, okay, I don't know that. Uh, I don't really watch commercials. I can't wish death upon <laughs> Phil. Plus, Andre breaks the number one rule of every zombie movie: don't hide bites slash hide the fact a loved one was bit. Mm. Very okay. good point. TP Hoarder. Steve should have been at the door. None of the zombies would have gotten into the mall if he had done his job. Mm. I already forget. So, like, we're talking about you forgetting things. I already forgot so much about Donovan. Of the <laughs> it gets really crazy frenetic towards the end there. Right. Uh, Sean, <laughs> Sean Chalant. Oh, I love yes. that. Sean Chalant. <laughs> Steve. You've read because, this name before. <laughs> but I never, did I, did I, I've read it before, but I've never clued in. Have Put I it never together? clued into that? Yeah. <laughs> Sean <Okay>. Chalant. <laughs> I just hear you say it. So it's like, oh, oh. like nonchalant. Awesome. And then yeah. you just keep reading. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I said like Sean Chalant. No, I, I think you always said Sean Chalant. Yeah. Watch like we go back. I, we've had this very conversation before. Steve, yeah, right. because I never could get into Modern Family. Also, the song that plays during the montage is a lounge version of a disturbed song by a guy named Richard Cheese. 
That's his whole shtick, covering famous songs as a Vegas lounge tune. Really enjoyed the movie this time around. I remember not being very fond of it when it came out. Thanks for an excuse to revisit it. You're welcome. Hmm. And thank you. (laughs) Kirsten rocks. Steve was just a shitty person. Andre had a breakdown over losing his wife and child. (laughs) Okay. okay. Did he, did so he I guess that's, murder anyone? No. That's a ball. I... <laughs> Sarah Campbell. Andre gets my vote. Steve was an ass, but Andre was a loose cannon. I also am never a fan of the hide the bite characters in zombie movies. Thank you. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Jeremy Huff. Steve was a dick, but Andre not only hid his wife's bite and the change that happened after. Rule number one in a zombie apocalypse. See, See everyone? Team Zach People is are, vocal. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's team kill Andre, not Felix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jazzy Boo. I had to pick Andre because of the whole hiding the bite and baby thing. Like, come on, man. Amethyst Frost. Before I even saw the choices, I hoped somebody would nominate Andre as he's the thing I remembered the most about the movie and also the character who frustrated me the most thanks to that damn zombie baby. Mackay Pfeiffer really got dealt some shitty characters in horror movies between this and I still know (laughs) what you did last summer. Enough said. (laughs) Nicholas Wetzel. Steve never really contributed much besides boat keys. He didn't really want to at first either. And pointing out celebrity lookalike zombies, R.I.P. Burt Reynolds, Jay Leno, and Rosie O'Donnell. Plus, Monica said he used all of the lemon stuff in the booze, so they had to use the vanilla stuff instead. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. That is funny. <laughs> uh, uh, Silent Saturn. What the tar man said. So, I don't know. Sometimes these comments are not in order, so we'll we'll oh. we'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, Maddie okay. <laughs> Ice, this one was hard, but when it comes to Steve, you knew he was an ass from the get go. Not only uh, that it was on them for leaving him to keep the door that door open. Andre, though, mm. was going crazy and delusional, which made him dangerous and volatile. We don't know how much worse it could have gotten if Norma hadn't gone to check on him and Luda. So I have to go with Andre, even though he just wanted his family. R.I.P. Norma, by the way. Okay. Thank you. No one, no one has really, you know, poor Norma. Poor Billy, poor Norma. I uh, said it a bunch. <laughs> poor Norma. <laughs> poor Lori. I love that. Let actress. another one get out. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> scared another one away. <laughs> Who's the actress no! who plays Norma? <laughs> Next. Which which actress? What? The one who played Norma. Wait, okay. Well, I, like I was going to say who is she? Um she's she's a, a character actress. I can't remember her name right now cuz I can't remember anything. Okay. But she's been in like everything from like <clears throat> the Hairspray movie musical to like the TV movie uh, about uh Judy Garland's life that Judy Davis and Tammy Blanchard won Emmys for. Like okay. she's all in everything. She's worked forever. Got she's it. just great. Got yeah. it. Uh my chunky Jordy Steve was an ass, and the dog was called Chips. <laughs> we said Skip. that eventually. We said Skips. Skips. Is it no, chips then, we, then yeah. I got it right, because I had yeah. it in my notes somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Blue Box. <laughs> I remember that. Blue Box is Andre. Apart from the obvious reasons, he was no fun at all. You guys should try the vanilla stuff. The lemon stuff is all gone. Steve likes to put it in his booze. <laughs> uh n- Men, Mendehito. I will never get over the fabulous old lady getting killed because of him. Andre every time. <laughs> Kieran Lee Hamilton. I know most people will vote for Steve because he's a dick, but Andre actually killed another survivor and put the lives of everyone in the mall at risk, so for that reason, he gets my vote. Thomas Baker. Steve is a sleaze, but Andre was not right in the head during the third act. Uh, Michael Vasquez, Steve, and Little King. So this is the next Cherry Picker episode. When it is, when is it? Because I want to watch the movie before the pod. Well, it was last week. Right. <laughs> it was la- last week. All right. Uh, you get you get first dibs. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, you're gonna have to help me with the name. <laughs> it's not okay because there's creepy camera guy, but there's also the creepy killer guy, the one yes. who's like doing the the humping and pumping and then the stabby wabbies. Right. And he's the one who gets electrocuted in the tub. That guy. Right. Whatever his name is. Arcady. Because that guy. Okay, that guy. Arcady. Okay. Arcady. Arca- like Arcadia without the ya at the end. Okay. I'll just, okay. you know, it'll, it'll be written, folks. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> I'm never going to remember it. I'm not going to try. Yeah. So this guy. No, just because um, he's the one who commits the murder. He's he, he's the one who put the fear in the eyes of that poor woman, like, while she was going to go. And, you know, oftentimes I'll say, like, the people who open the door for people like that sometimes are, like, even worse. But the fact that this guy, I don't know, uh, he... I can't even call him like a shark or any kind of like predator like that because he's worse than a shark. Like he's a fiend. He's 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 the worst of humanity. He's I, I th- there's no room for even uh, for, for me to feel anything but just absolute disgust and rage at his existence. Um, that's the thing. You know, the thing that gets me usually is if I see someone, I kind of go like, you're what's wrong with the world. He's He does that for me in this movie. So kill him. And I, it was so gratifying to see him die. Kill him again. <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> How right. about you, Zach Cherry? Well, I'm going to use some Edward is Truth logic for my nomination in that okay. case. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you to vote against Edward because he forgot the cardinal sin that Arcady committed, which was killing that dog. So for that, you know, <laughs> he did kill the dog. He did. And then he killed the custodian. But you, right for, but you, did, but, but you already the... forgot to mention it. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, but no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, to to use your uh, way of thinking. Uh, vote for Laosha because he seemed to be the one that was in control. He, he yeah. all the decisions were made by him. He was the one running the show. He told what's his face to do everything. So for that, he's he's the mastermind. Kill him. Hmm. Oh, I was like really serious. He couldn't about have done that. anything Kill without him. my guy. He couldn't have done any of that without my guy, though. So my know, guy, I love how you're just like ownership. The arms. Ownership is <laughs> just like I. I've got Arcady. He's my guy. <laughs> Or, so there you go. Laosha, I, I, I hopefully I'm saying this right, or Arcady for your heart, yeah. for your conscience. And yeah. you can uh, vote over on Patreon if you are supporting us again. We thank you very much. There's an extra opportunity. You can head over there and cast that extra vote and get early access to future episodes, back catalog of all our Cherry Picker After Darks. You can head over and vote on Instagram at the Cherry Picker Pod. So follow us there. And you can also vote on YouTube over in the community section. You can subscribe to us there. And if you are new to the Cherry Picker and you're watching us on YouTube, you can go follow the uh, the link thingy. What is it? The RSS feed thingy in the description down below yeah, and you can listen to yeah, us that. if that's better because you're tired of seeing our faces uh or vice versa if you're listening <laughs> go head over there but subscribe if you just uh, can't you can't fight the curiosity my god what do they look like yeah go to youtube and you can yeah. see we're matching ish again charcoal gray it's charcoal well, gray this is more like, this is more like navy <laughs> but it, it, the, the, the oh, camera is it, it looks a, like gray to me yeah Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've got like a, a kind of more royal blue going on underneath my charcoal. Well, it's maybe it's like a bluish, a it. bluish gray. You know, like sometimes, you know, grays have hues of blue in them. Yeah. I'm like the two paints that you have to mix together in order to get Zach's color shirt. That's, that's what's going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where can they find you on social media, Mr. Paint Mixer? Uh, uh... Yeah, you can find my, my me, me mixing my paints on my my Instagram and my later books in my YouTube and my TikTok. All Edward is truth, all one word, all traditional spelling. Just look. I mean, <laughs> as long as you're screen. not mixing uh, only uh, primary reds, yellows, and blues, like 
what's his fuck from <laughs> you will forever be making that reference <laughs> i know <laughs> the leprechaun painters are the three bane three of men who paint <laughs> or three guys is it three guys i don't Maybe it's guys know. I don't it's like three children we won't remember because the theme they're, of today's the, the kid the kid was probably more mature than any of the other adults that were with them. Oh, he or was, he was like, like a more, little old man. He was like a He was a yeah, little old man and then you, yeah, yeah, and then and then there was the guy who had the the mental deficiency and then there was the guy mm-hmm. who was just, you know, wanted to get it on with with Jay yeah. Aniston. Um, <laughs> and insult her vegetarianism or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what it, yeah, she had a thing. But um yeah, you can find me at uh oh. Retro Bitch Face on Instagram. Zach Cherry 8 on Twitter, uh, Zach Cherry on Letterboxd, or Zach Cherry, my main YouTube channel. And uh, b- b- what's going on next week? Or not next week, because next week is the Cherry Picker After Dark. That's the Survivor right. Final Girls 2. And then after that, we're taking a week <laughs> off. But in May, what is the, what is the first uh, episode of May? I literally have to look it up because I wrote it down. I typed it in and I don't remember already. Well, that's how bad the it is. Mo- there's a new movie coming out and we're, yes. we covered the first it's that one where those those people who you don't know uh, do do that thing. Are they strange? And they're not during the day. They and they're they're not they're not victims. They're predators and Pray. So they yeah. pray. At, Do they pr- uh, are they predators pray, right? that pray, or they're like praying to to God? Yeah, I know, right? It's a pre. Yeah, we only pray at night, you know. I, I wonder if there's a movie "Strangers" P R A Y at night. <laughs> Very different yeah. movie. Well, there you go. Strangers uh, pray at night. Strangers pray at night. That's 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 going to be our next regular episode. But we thank you for yeah. watching and for listening, and we will be right back.